All right, Reddit, what is your all-time best drunken story? I had an evaluation at work about 10 years ago. I was really worried about it, so didn't drink for about a week before so as to be on top form. I absolutely aced it, came out with flying colors. The boss took a few of us out for dinner. The night should have come to an end when he went home at about 11 p.m., but being nicely pissed me and a mate stayed out, hit a club. Anyway, I wake up the next day in a shithole of a town in Malaysia with no recollection of how I got there. My mate was nowhere to be seen. I had no money and no passport. This was 11 a.m. I only just kept my job, still at the same company, but had real trouble getting back to Singapore without a passport. Had to get someone to Western Union money to me and go to the British consulate in Kuala Lumpur and tell them I lost my passport so I could get a new one and back to Singapore. I still have no idea what happened as my mate says he left me at about 2 a.m. Friends say they know a great beach we can camp on, secluded, out of the way, etc. Turns out it requires a two-mile walk along a popular trail that starts in the city, and then you do a mountain goat impression 200 foot down a clay cliff. I bring a cooler with 8 liters of home-brewed wine. Drinking. Makingness. Drinking. Marshmallow roasting. Drinking. Drinking. 5.30 AM, time to go home. Let me paint you a picture. My girlfriend is cute as ever, well put together, same as she always is. She is walking our dog, who is adorable and behaving well and is petted by some 20 to 30 joggers and cyclists that pass by. Following closely behind is a man who has obviously fallen on hard times. He is wearing only boxer briefs, an unbuttoned flecktarn German army jacket, and boot on his left foot. 75% of him is caked in a thick layer of clay. He is struggling with a limp caused by wearing one boot and falling down the 200 foot tall embankment. Twice. He is balancing a very large cooler on his head. He is either a grin or a concussion, but the clay makes it hard to tell. This man is me. From what I've been told, my only regret is that I was too hammered the next morning to remember the looks I was getting. One man began laughing hard, got off of his bicycle, and shook my hand. TLDR 20 to 30 early morning joggers slash cyclists saw an indecent zombie with a cooler on its herd limping home. Was hammered with three friends a few years back and got in a scrap with some random guys. Cops broke it up and told us if they saw us again that night we'd be spending the night in jail. Went back to the bar street and got caught by the same cop who sure enough threw us all in the wagon. When we got to lock up they had run out of cells. It was St. Paddy's day, so they threw us all together in a communal cell with one other random dude. We all stripped naked and started beatboxing and dancing in the cell, and this random guy joined us like it was totally natural. In the morning they let every single person out before processing us. When we finally got through the two cops at the desk were kind of smirking and then one of them just blurted out Sue what was up with that homoerotic dance party last night boys? The whole crew was watching you from back here. Best $65, ticket, I ever spent. I was 16. Getting hammered with a group of friends at the neighborhood park in the middle of the night. Everyone is smoking weed, boozing etc. The cops get called by a nearby resident. When they show up everyone bolts. We seem to break up into groups like we had planned the shit. I immediately grab the hot chick in the group and tell her to follow me because I know the way. The way to where? I don't know but she actually listens. However, a friend of mine also tags along. I lead her and my friend, we'll call him Willie and her no lie, to an undisclosed location. We sit under a big pine tree, the kind where the boughs droop and touch the ground, to stay out of sight. It was early fall and getting a little chilly. She's freaking out, but not too bad. It sobers all up a little. Willie looks pissed because I'm giving Nilly a bunch of attention, making sure she's warm bumming her a cigarette, you know. Courageous drunken chivalry, we'll call it. Willie got so pissed that he decided to leave and try to find the others. I convinced Nilly we should stay and wait it out. We're talking quietly and finally starting to relax when I pulled out a big, fat ass, spliff. I told her that Willie was probably going to draw the cops to him by walking around looking and we would most likely be safe. She agreed. Now let me clarify. I wasn't good looking or popular, but that night I had my game going. The darkness was my wingman. Bottom line we had sex, woke up and starting dating. We dated for 3 years before she ended it. I'm now 29 years old and still think of this as my yahoo moment. TLDR got drunk and banged my future GF under a pine tree. Edit for punctuation. Not me but a buddy of mine. Preface, we went to some party and he talked to a girl but didn't hook up. Much later on, he talked to her out of the blue. They ended up getting drunk and hooking up at her place. They blacked out and the next morning he went home. Later in the day, the girl called him and asked why there's S in her sink. 
He then remembered going to the bathroom, but the toilet was on the other side of the room and the sink, well it was right there. In the end, he went back and cleaned it up. TLDR friend got drunk and shit in a girl's sink. I got wasted one night and stayed at a friend's house. On the bus home the next day, I was still pretty drunk, but also hungover too. The worst, most dangerous combination ever. The vibrations of the bus didn't help the situation. I suddenly felt the urge to spew so I jumped up and as I opened my mouth to ask the driver to stop, I vomited, nay, I projectile vomited all over an old lady who was sat in one of those seats that faced sideways. The foul odor was instantaneous. She looked utterly distraught. There were many people on the bus, half of them gagged, and a small child started crying. The driver stopped, in utter disbelief I assume, and I just pressed the emergency exit button and got the hell off. Luckily it was really heavily raining so the rain washed away most of the puke on me but I can't imagine the horrors that I left on that bus. I walked home, quite a distance, in the rain, and when I got home, I laughed. A lot. I'm a bad person, but that was so ridiculous I just had to. I'd love to see if that bus had CCTV on, it was a good four years ago though so I'm confined to the fact I'll never see that footage of me violating an old woman. It's a Friday night, my first year of college. My three roommates and I are in a medium-sized suite, one room on either side of a shared living area. It's my roommate's 21st birthday. Commence festivities. So the night begins. It's the four of us, the birthday boy's girlfriend, and the girlfriend of one of my other roommates, whom I'll refer to as Sam, and his girlfriend Jessica. After far too many shots, we all get s-housed. The birthday boy retreats into his, our, room with his girlfriend and locks the door, presumably to bang. After a bit, Sam and his girlfriend Jessica do the same for his side of the room. Now the fun begins. I'm left with my last remaining roommate, I'll call him John, playing drunk in Smash Brothers sure enough, I end up having to answer nature's call. My bladder ready to rupture and unleash boozy piss upon my floor, I bang on the nearest of our doors, screaming, it's an emergency, with no explanation. I receive no response. I get the same outcome by trying the other door, I'd find out why later. My natural reaction was then, of course, to try one of the other rooms on our floor. Grabbing John, my last drunken comrade, I venture into the hallway in my underwear and test the door of the room across the hall. To my pleasure, it was unlocked. We did what we thought was tiptoeing, which in reality was most likely lots of stupid giggling and stomping, and I eventually found the bathroom and went in. I was in there for what John later told me was a couple of minutes. I was not prepared for the scene I encountered upon opening the door. Apparently, while aimlessly waiting outside of the bathroom for me, John alerted one of the residents to our presence. At this point, it's around 3 a.m. Tired and confused, he asked, why the F are you in our room? John had to think on his feet. He responded, just, just wait. In a minute my roommate will come out of the bathroom and explain everything. So then I emerged from the bathroom, analyzed the situation, and proclaimed, dude, I'm sorry. On the rails. Sorry. I had like 17 shots. Sorry. Then John and I stumbled out of the room while the confused and tired resident cursed us profusely. So we're back in our room, my bladder relieved. The doors to our rooms are still locked. Upset with this, I decide to bang on the door Sam and Jessica were behind. As far as I knew, they were still having voracious drunken sex, but I didn't care. Eventually, Jessica opened the door. She mumbled, we F up. I will never forget what I saw. On the bed behind her, Sam was vomiting his guts out. The comforter was literally destroyed. It looked like a fire hydrant had been opened in the room, except instead of water, it sprayed rancid regurgitation. I later found out that no sex happened, instead, they shut the door, got in the bed, and immediately started throwing up. So at this point, Jessica lay on the ground on her back, a big no-no, and passed out. I somehow managed to understand that this was a bad thing and proceeded to keep her sitting up and talk to her to make sure she wasn't dying. Now, I feel like at this point in my tale it's important to note that Jessica is not an unattractive girl. She's pretty good looking, actually. So when we were sitting facing each other and she leaned forward and kissed me, with a mouth that actually didn't taste like vomit, I was more than conflicted. Sam was either passed out or heaving to the point where his body just wouldn't accept any sensory input, so he did not see this happen. But after a second, my boost-filled mind made a Herculean effort of self-restraint, and I pushed her away from me. In a moment of immediate karma, Jessica turned to my right and projectile vomited all over the floor. I had done the right thing. The rest of the night was largely uneventful, save for me trying to clean up my friend's puke until eventually succumbing to my body's urge to expel the toxins I'd imbibed. 
After puking my brains out, I later found out the birthday boy also missed out on drunk sex, closing the door and throwing up almost immediately. Oh, and apparently John crawled into the birthday boy's bed at some point to fall asleep, only to be joined by a drunk out of his mind birthday boy who proceeded to straddle him and rub his beard on his neck, mistaking him for his own girlfriend. John became alerted to this before anything escalated and absconded. TLDR, I broke into a neighbor's room to piss, got kissed by a roommate's girlfriend but was rewarded with good karma by pushing her away and avoiding being covered in puke, everyone got C-blocked by their own puke, and gay sex almost happened. I guess I should preface this with I've never have gotten drunk before this night. First night at college. So me and some friends go to a frat party and I start drinking all the alcohol I can get my hands on. I start hitting on a girl and I was jokingly making fun of her. Out of nowhere the girl slaps me so hard I thought she dislocated my jaw, had my friend slap me the opposite way, but that didn't help, but then out of nowhere she starts to make out and I took her back to my dorm room. Needless to say went home at 3 with a 7 and woke up at 7 with a 3. And my jaw hurt for weeks. 21st birthday timeline. Cousin hands me a paper bag with 3 pints of Heineken and 2 packs of cigarettes around 9pm. These need to be gone by midnight. Begin 3 hour game of brood war. Get ready and walk down to the bar street. First bar, one shot, Grecian urn, two pints of Bud Light. Walk to the second bar, do a kamikaze shot, one beer, one game of cricket. Next bar, spin birthday wheel, get a double shot of Jim Beam, slam it, drink an arrogant bastard, Jaeger shot, vodka slash Red Bull. Next bar, game of billiards, I lose miserably, drunkenly try to hit on two girls, no dice, mind eraser shot, one corona. Last bar, B-dubs SXE friend orders me a three wise men, immediately followed by a cement mixer, breathe deeply, feeling woozy, order chicken wings to settle my stomach, wait impatiently at the bar, start to throw up but cover my mouth with my hand, realize I throw up a little into my hand, put it back into my mouth and swallow it thinking I will get thrown out if the bar staff sees me, feel accomplished in my task, get yelled at by bartender, GTFO, retort, you can't throw me out, I just ate. My own puke, bartender yells, you just puked all over the bar, s head, realize that the bar is literally covered in puke, get escorted outside where I'm sat on the curb. Begin yelling at kids walking into the bar, don't go in there, they are a bunch of D's. Threw me out after I ate my own puke. Cousin walks outside and sits down next to me saying me sorry I got booted and hopes I'm having fun on my birthday, then hands me my chicken wings, so we'll be out in like 10 minutes and walks back inside. I sit there eating my wings on the curb. We walk back to the house. Under 21 friend is over waiting for me to get back, drives an old school Camaro that is his baby. I jump up on the roof of his car, start jumping up and down laughing. He comes racing across the street to hurt me, I jump off the car, twist my ankle, and black out. Wake up the next day, soaked in sweat. Vaguely see flashing lights on the wall. Roll over and look out the window to see flames shooting out of my neighbor's second floor window. Sigh. Walk downstairs to an empty house. Walk out on the porch while firemen are putting out flames next door. All my friends sitting on the porch couches watching. I say, please tell me I did not do that. Girlfriend at the time, no. Sigh of relief. I must have had some crazy dreams. I am soaked in sweat. Everyone cracks up laughing. Girlfriend, that's not sweat you moron. You pissed all over me in your sleep. I had to take a shower at 4 a.m. The end. Halloween about four years ago. My wife and I are out of town on vacation. A friend of ours lives about 50 miles north of where we're staying, so we make plans to meet up at his house and go out with him and his friends. So we drive up there and then we all pile into a few cars and drive about 20 miles to town. My wife and I just get plastered because we know we're not driving. We plan on staying the night at his house on the couch or floor, so we just went balls to the walls and drank way too much. Around midnight we realize that we don't recognize anyone at the club we're at. We get kinda worried and search for my friend or anyone we recognize. We found one girl who was at the house with us, and we ask her what's going on. She doesn't know either. I didn't have my phone, nor did my wife, because we didn't have pockets in our costumes. We leave the club and go bar hopping looking for my friend. Can't find them anywhere. Now it's about 2am. We're in the middle of nowhere. We have no money, no phone, and we don't know the area at all. We just start walking because we're still pretty drunk. We see like 100 people waiting at a bus stop, so we walk over there, but we recognize no one. We decide to get on the bus and just let it take us out of town towards where we came from. About an hour in, we're freaking out. Everyone on the bus is hammered or passed out. We get off the bus in the middle of nowhere and decide to walk. It's pitch black outside and freezing. 
We walk for about 15 minutes and, what the fuck do you know? We end up at our friend's house. Somehow. Some way. It was a miracle. We pound on the door and he answers, drunk, laughing, having a great time. My wife punches him in the nuts as hard as she can. He topples over and starts puking. She grabs her purse and we get in my car. We drove about 100 yards away and slept in the car until probably 6 a.m. It was a terrible night and a horrible experience. Being lost with no money and no phone in a place you're unfamiliar with is pretty scary, especially at night, especially when everyone around you is too drunk to help out. I called my friend the next day and it turns out he left the club around 11 p.m. and went home to fuck some chick. Apparently he bailed on everyone and took the big car we took to town. And drove drunk. Needless to say, we're not friends anymore. Oh, the total last show that was my second semester of senior year of college. It was St. Patrick's Day weekend. My boyfriend had broken up with me a month before and I was still pretty upset about it. I had also just turned my thesis in earlier that week and found out I was in danger of being one credit short from graduating. I was ready to have a wild night and take my mind off things. Friday night is a friend's birthday party. My friend E and I pregame in my room beforehand, so we're kind of buzzed when we show up. At the party I drink more, and I start indiscriminately making out with people. By the time I went home, my count was 5 girls and 1 guy, I'm a straight girl. The night ended with a large group of us cuddling naked on the soccer field. Theater major in college. Cast party. There was maybe 100 to 150 people in a relatively small space. Somewhere in the middle of the night the crowd split like the Red Sea. I'm sure there is a name for this, and each of us got a chance to do a solo dance move through the parted crowd. I was maybe the third person to go. My buddy went directly before me and did the sprinkler and everyone cheered with joy. Being the showman that I was, I had to one-up his performance. My drunk brain took over and decided the only rational thing to do at this point was the worm. I have never performed said move in my 21 years and I have never performed it since that glorious day. I don't even know how to do the damn thing. I ruined my favorite shirt that night but my dance move blew the roof off that motherfucker. Worth it. TLDR did the worm. It's been six years, still getting panties thrown at me. I was at a birthday party for two friends. They had it a bit outside of my town, so we were in a hunting lodge. After eight beers and some wine, I went around in search of wood to start a fire because it was minus five degrees Celsius. I went about 50 meters into the thick forest and accidentally fell into a creek. The water was not deep, but I broke the ice and fell completely inside. I managed to get out on the other side and attempted to get back to the lodge, which would take me about five minutes, but I got lost and went totally wet in the wrong direction in search of a house or whatever sign of civilization. After 30 minutes, my sweater started to freeze. I don't remember how long I walked, but eventually, I found a house in a village and broken because I thought no one was there. They called the police and took me home with no questions asked, or at least I don't remember. When I woke up, my father came into my room to ask me where I was all night. It looked to him like I was a bit red in the face, so I told him what I could remember, and he took me to the ER. I had mild hypothermia. The next day, I went back to see where I had been walking and followed my path. I realized that I had walked for about 6 kilometers, wet to the bone, in minus 5 degrees Celsius. TLDR, got drunk, fell into a frozen creek, walked 6 kilometers, and then broke into a house. Edit, sorry for my spelling and that English is not my first language. My two best girlfriends came up to visit me in college for a weekend. The debauchery started pretty early, and by noon we were pretty much blacked out. We woke up the next morning in a city about 30 miles away, in a hotel room that we did not pay for. So, naturally, we decided to look through our phones and cameras and try to figure out what happened. We had pictures in a casino, we were nowhere near one, posing in a pasture full of cows, sitting on a horse attached to a touristic carriage and naturally with people we had never met. But the best part has to be that all three of us woke up with our first tattoos. Hell of a weekend. Step 1, drank a lot. Step 2, unknown. Step 3, woke up 50 miles away in the back of a Nissan Stara parked on Santa Monica Beach. Like, jumped the barrier and drove towards the water. WTF, stepped out of the car to the morning sunrise, and low out of the surf saunders the owner of said car in his birthday suit without a shed of shame. Step 4, then we listened to Tom Petty and ate on Let's. After step 1, was deep underway, at around 3.30 a.m., the driver of the Xterra, well call him M, and our friend B both for whatever reason got really hungry. It may have had something to do with grass. I'm not sure. 
Either way, I'm starting to fall asleep on the couch, Reed passed out, and they decided to take me along to Carl's Jr. for food. The way they tell it, they were legitly concerned for me and wanted me to get food with them thinking that the smell of burgers would wake me up. Sitting at the drive through one realizes there is big swell coming into the Huntington Beach that next morning and his board is in the back of the car, spurring the thought, let's go to the beach. 50 miles down Highway 10, in LA and we arrive at Santa Monica just before sunrise, me still asleep. Being lazy, Em abandons the plan to surf and he and B decide they gotta make the trip worth it, so of course, skinny dipping. Em is still feeling invincible from the previous night's consumptions, and decides, fuck it, I got four-wheel drive on this bitch and drives over the cement wheel stops in the parking lot, over a sand dune, and onto the beach, where he proceeds to drive up onto the wet sand, park the car, strip and run into the ocean. B was right behind him the whole way. Meanwhile, sun comes up, and I come to in the back of a car. WTF. Open door, I recognize the car, it's MS, but not the place. Could've sworn I feel asleep on my couch in my dorm. Then he I I, a naked B and M come splashing out of the surf. I was so dazed, I didn't even think how strange it was I just muttered something about needing breakfast and got back into the car, shotgun this time. We drove back to our college campus in time for break fast and along the way, we realized that the Nissan Stara has a speed restrictor at 95 miles per hour. But we made it back in time for the omelet bar. Boom. I originally told this one on our slash drunk, but it's one of my favorites. So last night, I was so drunk I gave the cab the wrong address when I was trying to get home from the bar. He ended up dropped me off like a mile away from where I lived. I walked around trying to get my bearings and slipped on the ice, re-breaking the frames of my glasses and hurting my knee. Eventually, I reached what I thought was my entrance to my apartment and tried to get in, but none of my keys worked. I smoked a cigarette and tried calling my roommate, but he didn't pick up. I looked for my car on the street and realized it was not there, I must be at the wrong place. A few minutes later I see a cop car driving up and they stop right in front of me. They ask, do you know where you are? And I said something along the lines of, honestly, officers, I'm really drunk. Can you please give me a ride home? They looked at each other and kind of laughed and one of them said, I've been there before man. Let me see your ID so I can run your information real quick. I gave them my ID and got in the back seat. I explained more about what happened as they ran my name on their computer. I came up clean, so they decided to give me a ride home. On the way there we talked more, but the best part was when we got close and I told them it's a pain in the ass to get to because of one-way streets and the one driving, looks back and says, are you kidding? Look at who you're talking to. He then flashed his lights and went down the wrong way of a one-way street. They dropped me off and told me to stay safe. I honestly felt like I was in super bad and thought they were awesome for not citing me or taking me to jail. What about you? Tell us your story in comment section, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Right now, 